Hello everyone, welcome to a very special video today. Uh, I have been asked several times to kind of go through how I got started in poker. And as you may or may not know, I've been doing a series on YouTube called Run It Up where I'm trying to turn $50 into $10,000 on Ultimate Poker. Uh, I actually started my poker career through running it up off of a free roll win. Um, starting with zero, winning money in a free roll, and then taking that money and running it up to uh, quite a lot of money and turning it into a full career. So people have asked me to tell the story, and I've wanted to kind of give it the attention and detail that uh, a full video could give it, not just do it like anecdotally in like within another video. So uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that here while I'm in LA, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I actually have uh, when I, in 2006 I wrote a uh, I wrote out my story of how I got to where I had been in where I was in 2006 um, of the last two years in my poker career. So I have a, a pretty big um, you know kind of like a journal that I posted. Um, uh, of like thoughts and what happened and stories and stuff like that and I revisited that post in 2010 and I kind of added some more stories from that and I still have some decent recall now about some stuff that happened then as well so the combination of the three I think makes for good stories I have lots of pictures although in this video there probably won't be too many pictures because this is the pre Facebook days we're talking 2004 here right so there's not a ton of pictures in this video but there will be when we get to the next the next step here uh, the next the next video so I hope you guys like this I I want to say a couple things before I get started and that uh, one I didn't change names of sites or people and I'm just gonna say what it is just for like historical record keeping accuracy stake I, I think it makes sense to just be like yep I played on this site then this site then I don't think I need to to kind of like censor that even though I'm a very happy ultimate poker pro ding <laughs> like ultimate poker here no if only i had an editor then maybe i could do that right no, not this time so uh yeah uh i'm i'm not going to change names though unless it's like embarrassing for other people but uh, otherwise i'm just going to tell the stories as it is and um you know i could definitely have inaccuracies that either were embedded initially in the 2006 post or that i've just misremembered over the years or you know whatever it is so don't uh, I, I I'm trying my best to be as accurate as possible, but there could be inaccuracies. Also, when I go back to things from 2006, you have to remember that I was 19 when I wrote it about things when I was 17. So you got to give me a little bit of a leeway there with both how dramatically I write and you know what I actually do because I was kind of young back then. So so yeah. So that all being said, uh, let's uh, let's get the ball rolling here. The only way that Team Run It Up can really tell a true True, true story. Uh, yes, that's right. It's back, folks. Boom. <laughs> there we go. Story time has officially begun. So I was first exposed to poker in um, April or May of 2004. I came home from high school and my dad was watching the World Poker Tour on TV. I don't remember what episode it was, but it might have been like Legends or something. It was the episode that Howard Letterer would go on to win and uh, the event that Howard would go on to win. And it was... Uh, immediately something that caught my attention and that I was extremely interested in. I, I had always been very competitive and a, a very like a, a game player type of kid and uh, the, the idea of people playing a game for money was like oh that's so cool. And I remember being like instantly hooked by by poker and and what it could potentially mean. Um, you know not that I ever thought I was gonna make a career out of it at that point by any means but I was just interested by the game immediately right right off the bat. And the good thing is a lot of my friends were like just getting into poker and had already started playing a little bit they were a little bit ahead of me so I had I wasted no time at all getting into a home game that was actually held at my friend Corey's house and uh, I set that up and I was super excited so I had I had it off there with like 50 bucks or whatever it was it was a $20 tournament and I think there was like a $10 side game if a $10 side tournament for people that had busted the first event uh, yeah the first event yes <laughs> yes event um, so I don't remember hands from that night, but I, I to this day I still clearly remember the what it was like to show up, and I, I remember I remember where I parked across the street from this house. Like I remember I remember it very clearly, and we were playing in his basement, and I don't I don't remember exact hands or anything, but I know I lost. I lost 
I know I lost uh, two binds, the 20 and the 10, and I remember that my friend Corey was an extremely intimidating presence at the table. He was like this, the he wore sunglasses and was very like commanding. His personality was very dominant. Ooh, log on the fire. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not an exciting part of the story yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, it's a little scary. But uh, yeah, so I remember Corey being a very like dominant figure in poker, and I, I remember admiring how well he was able to control the table with his presence just by how he was acting, and that was something that made an impression on me early on for for sure. But uh, I, I remember losing thirty dollars that night, going home and feeling really bad about it, just feeling like I was I shouldn't have played, that it was dumb, that it was just like a stupid a stupid thing to do. But by the next morning, I was re-motivated to get so much better. Like that anger had turned into resolve, and I just, not anger, but that tilt had turned into resolve, and I just wanted to learn. So that day, I went out and, and bought every book that I could buy. I, re I went to the library. I remember getting books in the library as well, and there were no videos back then. You had to actually read books, yes, <laughs> that was it back in the day. And remember, there wasn't even like no limit literature. It was limit hold'em books or just like general poker theory books. Like, I remember Theory of Poker was one of the first books that I bought. And a couple of limit hold'em books, but I don't remember the names because I might be off in the timeline. But I know Small Stakes Hold'em was a big book in my early career. Um, again, not that I played limit hold'em live, but um, it was one of those things. I just read it because that was what there was to read. So I just read. I just read it. That was it. That was the only choice. So uh, I I also when I was starting to learn in this same time in my life, I found Something Awful's poker subforum, Poker in the Rear. Yes, that is the real name. <laughs> and uh, and I started posting there about poker, interfacing with, interacting with the community, uh, and uh, just trying to get better. And actually, that Something Awful subforum, Poker in the Rear, uh, gave birth to a pretty strong bunch of poker talent um, in myself. Uh, heads up, uh, I don't know what year he won. I think it was 2010. Um, heads up uh, World Series Poker, 10K Heads Up Champion Leo Walpert came from Poker in the Rear. Um, my very good friend Alex Vinovsky, EC10, came from uh, came from there. Steve O'Dwyer, uh, absolute sicko Steve O'Dwyer. And Vivek, who is obviously also has done very well for himself. All of us pretty, pretty much started within the same like 18-month window on that, sub, on that sub forum as our home base. So we were all, we've, all, we've all been pretty close through the years. And uh, I would say that f Alex, Alex, Leo, and Vivek are three of my absolute best friends. And Steve and I have always been close, and we've all been pretty close throughout the years. So we've all we've all kind of come up t together through the last like ten years, which is kind of kind of kind of kind of crazy to be honest. By uh, by July, I I was so dedicated to poker, and this is July two thousand four. By July, I was so dedicated to trying to get better that a friend of mine, uh, my friend Chuck had started we started talking like every day about poker like it was one of those things where we kind of decided to share information and things we had learned books we had bought you know we just we just completely just were open with each other about poker strategy and theory and a as would happen several times in my career uh, in the rest of my career I gravitated towards Chuck because he was good at things that I was not in that he was he was he went on to actually uh, get an engineering degree, I believe, and that kind of like math-based analytics was something that I was always very weak at, and he was very good at that. And throughout my life, almost all of my close poker friends were more math guys and less feel guys for a long time, at least. And it was great because that was what I was weak at, so that kind of helped me balance my I like the balance skills right there. <laughs> uh, that kind of helped me. Uh, improve my poker game and just be generally a more balanced, better player. And he was hilarious. He was one of my, he might have been one of the funniest people I've ever been friends with. And having that as just like comedic relief back then was awesome too. And so, so smart, such a sharp kid. I, I would go so far as to say is that without my friend Chuck early on in my career, we spent so much time working without him. I, I don't know if I would have made it in poker or stuck with it. Or if I had, it would have looked very different. That's for sure, and I might not have been successful. Uh, having having someone like that that I could constantly talk to, ha ha have as like a, a confidant and someone that would always just be there talking hands was so valuable. And something that I really recommend to anyone else getting started is to make a good, good poker friend like that that you're just open with, that can tell you honestly what they think, that you can just talk about and not worry about holding back secrets or anything like that. For me, that was a crucial, crucial uh, factor in several stages of my career, but right off the bat, 
Chuck Chuck was my was my guy for that kind of stuff. So uh, as we had started working really hard, I started winning in the home games. You know, it was the kind of thing where like no one else was really working, or I, I don't I don't think so at least, or and not nearly as hard as we were. You know, we took it as seriously as you could take it. Um, we we just we made that was our goal. That was what we did. We just wanted to win at poker, so we just spent all of our time talking and working and thinking and reading and evaluating. And oh my God, the fireplace! <laughs> That's a crazy thing. He's so spunky. Okay. <laughs> uh, so so I actually wrote down a hand from that summer, which uh, I'm going to read parts of and paraphrase parts of, but uh, the, the hand that I wrote down, I was playing a 25 cent, 50 cent home game that summer, the very first summer I started playing poker, like two months in. I missed it, remember I wrote this in 2006, about 2004, so I, I don't really know how I could remember a hand like this uh, in 2006, like two years later, because I don't think I wrote down in 2006, but I was attempting to write nonfiction when I wrote this, so I don't know. I, I report, you decide. How about that? <laughs> uh, all right, so I picked up ace and of hearts on the button and raised. Uh, the big blind decides to min re-raise, and I called. The flop comes king nine four, two clubs. King nine, uh, sorry, nine four of clubs. He bet small. I'm reading. I'm reading it now, word for word. <laughs> he bet small, and I put him on ace, king, queens, or jacks. Of course, of course. What else would you put him on? <laughs> I called a plan formulating in my mind. The turn was a deuce. He bet small again. <laughs> I I didn't think he'd bet ace, king so small here. Yeah, of course. Why why wouldn't he bet ace? Uh, you know. All right, sure. Again, I called. The river peeled the king of clubs. All right, so the board, final board now is king, nine, four, deuce, king, two clubs, river club. Three clubs on the river. The guy, villain checks his cards and then checks. I paused five seconds before... <laughs> I paused five seconds. I'm all in, I announced, and dramatically pushed all my chips to the center. Oh, I really hope I didn't really do that. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the guy looked legitimately pained. My heart was racing as time itself seemed to slow down. He agonized for a felt like an hour, but it was probably no longer than 30 seconds before saying, You're a lucky son of a bitch, and I hate you. It's a little dramatic, I think. I guess everyone was a little dramatic back then, huh? Uh, two. <laughs> he flipped his cards over as he threw them away. Two jacks. Nice. Are my very first bluff that I ever wrote down, or at least I think so. How, by the way, that nobody had the slightest clue that I was even a little bit gay back then, uh, despite being this dramatic, is beyond me. But hey, you know, that's retrospect, I guess. <laughs> 2020 vision and all that, right? Hindsight. Uh, so as my as Chuck and I started to get better and better, we just wanted to play more and more, more often, of course. And the internet was the only place to go. Even though I was underage at the time, it was such like a wild, wild west thing back then. Like it, it doesn't really. It, it was very different than it was now. Uh, you know, it was just like completely un unregulated. There was no, there was no like I don't know. It was very, it was very different back then. So and, and playing underage for me, I, I, I you know, I. I honestly, I don't think people should do it now, of course, but, you know, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Back For me, it wasn't a big deal back in the day. I, 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 want, I didn't want to, I never deposited money because my parents wouldn't let me deposit money. So I, uh, I, I think that, you know, it's one of those things where I, I actually kind of feel like regulation is important to prevent people that are underage from depositing and gambling online. But, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. And regardless, the truth of the matter is I, at 17, wanted to play online, wasn't allowed to play online, so my only choice was free rolls. And so that's what I did. I made a schedule of all the free rolls that ran. The Pacific Poker one that ran at like 3 p.m. was a 500. It ran also at 1 a.m. There was one on Prima or Prima. I actually don't know the name of it because I've never actually heard the, the actual the network uh, in, in real life, I don't think. Um, so that had one at like 2 a.m. And then there were the, the Stars ones that were kind of uh, really hard to win because they were, they were like satellite type free rolls they weren't free roll free rolls but um, I played everything I had a schedule of everything and my sleep schedule started revolving around these free rolls and uh, and uh, I had a couple little scores I went two bucks here five bucks there but nothing really stuck and a lot of these sites didn't even offer like games small enough to like for you to be rolled for it so you'd win two bucks and your lowest stake was five cent ten cent what are you gonna do that's that's gonna require some run good to, to make that stick that's for sure and uh, by about August, Chuck and I decided, my friend Chuck and I decided that we were going to share 
any account that we that we binked any kind of free roll score on. Once again, it was Wild Wild West. The idea of multi accounting wasn't even a thing. It was you know not even a thing back then. The you know obviously uh, I've never multi accounted bes besides in this one instance you know ten years ago and back then it wasn't it wasn't even like a rule on a site that you couldn't share accounts with somebody so it uh you know not something that I have done ever since then but back then I was like yeah you know it seemed like I had twice the chance of winning money it was like okay go all right cool but uh yeah I that a long time ago obviously the poker world has changed quite a bit about multi accounting since then. Um, at, at some point about in this August time, I asked my parents to, to deposit and they, of course, said absolutely not. You know, even despite I was working so hard, they still looked at it as kind of like a, a video game that just was going to cost money and it was just not a good idea. It was like a, just like I was gambling. It wasn't even a video game. It was a, just like a complete gamble, like I was going to play blackjack or something like that. Uh, about this also same time in my life, I found, I discovered poker charts which was a site where you could enter all your sessions in and then kind of look at like your month, your week, where you won, where you lost, stuff like that. And uh, I kept extremely good records for years on poker charts, which is why uh, when we get to the next segment here of the video, you'll see a lot of the a lot of charts and stuff that I kept from those from those days of like what I want at this limit, what I want at this limit, how I did no limit, how I didn't limit hold them, and and all that stuff. So that that will be coming in the next video because August was about when I started keeping track of that stuff. So in that first summer I started playing poker, I won a sweet sweet one hundred eighty dollars, half of which was from like one win in August, and uh, one hundred eighty dollars in the summer was awesome as like a you know idiot seventeen year old you know soon to be college kid because uh, I had actually graduated that year due to my parents moving out of the district and I had to either graduate that same year from my old high school or move to a new high school for two years and I was like, no way, <laughs> no thank you, I'm out of here, peace. <laughs> That's basically what I said. And uh, yeah, so I, I had a lot, a lot of free time in my hands and I put all that time into poker. When school started again in September for all my friends, I went to college twice a week and everyone else went five days a week obviously and I took all the rest of that free time and put into poker and that was it that was what I did I just woke up read watched played the free rolls and that was it I remember in school writing down like I remember in college writing down like the hands that I played the night before running like math simulations on paper um, this is like uh, pretty pretty intense like I was I remember being being obsessed with poker that's the best word for it I was obsessed it was a passion and I loved it but I was obsessed with trying to win and getting better and uh, wow, this is a very action-heavy fireplace I picked here. Look at this. This is like always being... This guy is a very good caretaker here of this fireplace. Uh, <laughs> whoever this is is doing a great job. But uh, but yeah, so I I had went back to school. All my friends went back to school. So the action kind of died up. So we really had to win money online now. And uh, I, I started... Uh, I started accounts, obviously, at all these places, and I had been playing for a while, and um, this was the era in which my uh, Jay Carver name was born. Up until this point in my life, I had used Tacnipotin, which is my star's name. I had used Tacnipotin for everything, but it's 10 characters, which, by the way, is a obscure uh, demon in an R.A. Salvatore book. Um, I'm not even sure what book it actually is from, but I just liked the name of it and was like, Technopotent is a cool name for everything. So I used it for like all my screen names for, for when I was like 12 to 15 or 16 or something like that. And then Jay Carver was uh, spawned by um, Pacific Poker having an eight character limit, which was very annoying to me at the time. And uh, <laughs> I, I had to come up with something different and I was playing Far Cry, which uh, Far Cry 1, whose hero is Jack Carver, and I was like, huh, all right, Jay Carver, there you go, and had I thought, had I known I was going to become a professional poker player, I probably would have put more thought into it than that, but at the time, I was like, all right, Jay Carver, sounds cool, sounds like I'm like a, like a rich kind of like business guy, just dropping money, you know, I'm Jay Carver, so I was like, all right, cool, sweet, and that was it, that was the name that, uh, that I picked, and that was the name that I played under, so, uh, yeah, so this takes us to just about October, which is the end of the first, like, write-up that I did for this. So, at this point, I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm primed, I'm dreaming, I'm so, I'm like, you know, still working really hard, but never made anything stick yet. 
But uh, spoiler alert, something might stick eventually. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to be doing, obviously, the rest of these now, whether people like them or not, because, you know, hey, we're invested. <laughs> we've got a fireplace, we've got them all. So I'll be back doing more of this tomorrow. There'll be tons more pictures and stuff like that, because I have a lot more pictures from this time forward. This is kind of like the intro. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I had a good time telling this story, so I hope you guys enjoyed it so far. Uh, don't forget to comment below and let me know what you guys thought. And I'll be back with more tomorrow. Uh, still going to be in LA for probably like one or two more days. And then when I get home, we'll be doing lots of run it up. So it'll be like the first time I've had a week of pretty much dedicated time to running it up. So there'll be streams and long cash games and lots lots of cool content. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll be back with more tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.